Okay. Then we can hit relative. It's going to zero that out. It gives us a delta symbol. Now we see our measurement is at negative 1.6 volts. Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. For those of you that are new, my name is Luke, and today we're gonna to be going over all of the different test settings on your Cobalt DMP32 pocket multimeter. This is just an adorable little guy. I do love that design, but if you're a beginner, intermediate, you don't understand all of the tests, or how to uh, apply them in real life. We're gonna do practical application, uh, or if you're simply looking for a product review, this video will be for you. So why don't you go ahead, grab a snack, have a seat, and let's get into it. All right, we've got our little cobalt pocket multi multimeter. It seems like cobalt is a fan of saying mode instead of select, uh, which is different. Something you might not be familiar with, uh, seen milliamps, hertz, or the relative button on a multimeter, but we're gonna go ahead and cover every little setting. So we're gonna start here at milliamps and work our way on through. I've got some milliamp examples. And then keep in mind too, it's got your readings down here, 300 volts, 200 milliamps. So we'll be mindful of that. Luckily, everything that we'll be doing should be within those ranges. So let's go ahead, it's, it is auto ranging. Ooh, we don't have a range button. Let's see how these milliamp measurements turn out. We're gonna start out really small, some microamps. It's 120 microamps and it's showing up accordingly, so that's cool. 1200 microamps. Twelve thirty milliamps, and then thirty six milliamps. Kind of an interesting thing to have just some milliamps in there, but I guess for the setup, for just like a two port lead setup, to have any kind of current measurement at all, is kind of nice. That takes us through there. Let's go ahead. This is resistance diode. Continuity and capacitance, it's gonna default to resistance. Again, in auto, no range button. Let's just see how it does. Okay, it's kind of floating around there. Let's get something a little bit better. Okay, one mega ohm. Pay attention, see there's how there's a little M down there. So this isn't saying one ohm. This is saying 1,044,000 ohms or 1.04, you know, eight mega ohms. Okay, let's try another one. See how it comes back. Okay, that's a 10,000 ohm, 10K ohm resistor. Let's see this one. Yeah, this one always trips them up. Should just say 980 ohms, but it's 0 0.980 K ohms. And we'll try something kind of smaller. It does take a minute. I've noticed that on these cobalts, on the lower resistor settings, it takes a minute for the auto functionality to process it, but it does get there eventually and that's all that matters. Just if you're having to do a lot of resistance checks quickly, uh, I could see how that could be frustrating. Let's go ahead and cycle through. We've got our mode button. So next it'll go to diodes. Let's see what we got in store for diodes. We should be looking for voltage drop. This is just a standard diode. Notice the white line on the diode and my polarity lead, or my lead polarity, excuse me. And we do, we see, we can press the hold button, then we can take our leads off. That'll hold the value for us. So this is the voltage drop across the diode. And this, we want to see between 500 and 800 millivolts of voltage drop in one direction. So we were within that tolerance. We can press our hold button. And then the OL is for open loop or out of limits. We'll turn our diode around. We'll take another measurement and it should remain in that state of open loop. Okay, these these leads, they do feel a little cheap, but they are 
you do have the option to replace them. So I'm not going to complain about that. I think that's just fine. Uh, if they wear out quick, you can just get a new little set of leads. Not a big deal. And then something I always like to check with our diode test is it can it illuminate a white LED? And it can't. Okay, that's not a big deal. I always just like to check. Um, I think I'm the only one checking that. But And let's go to mode. Continuity. It emits a tone. It's very quiet. And that tone is dropping out a lot because these leads are not very good. So probably not a bad idea to get a fresh set of leads. You can get some on the Amazons for a pretty good deal. And what is the continuity checks good for? It's good for sorting out who's who. Okay, so the black wire goes to that one, red wire goes to that one, and then they're not shorted out together. Together, And then mode one more time. What are we in? We're in capacitance. Okay, let's see. We've got two different capacitors here. We'll run it through. If you're not familiar with capacitor testing, always want to discharge our capacitor first, and then We've got a little negative sign on this capacitor, so we'll put our little negative lead there. And then it's gonna take a minute to charge it up. So you gotta be patient. And we are getting absolutely nothing. So it's having trouble. This one might be simply out of the limits of its measurement capabilities. Let's try this smaller one. Try this test again. There we go. It's coming in at 1.53, excuse me, 51 microfarads. That's what that funky U is for down there, microfarads. And then like you can check the rated capacity of your capacitor should be annotated on there somewhere. And this one is rated for 47 microfarads, okay? So it's coming within tolerance. That center is just off. And then we have volts DC. It doesn't appear, oh, it is rated for AC voltage as well. And it even defaults to AC voltage. Now I'm gonna tell you, I already know enough about these leads to know that they're probably not gonna be long enough to fit in our little outlet here. Let's just try. Ah, we were able to get it in. There we go, 120. Okay, and then we can switch this one over. 120 potential between ground and hot. And then we can switch it over and see between our hot and our neutral, just some floating voltage there. Very nice. I always prefer to use an outlet tester with the outlets, okay? I don't like doing that method, but if that's all you got, uh, there you go. We'll demonstrate the relative button on the DC voltage mode. We should be able to do that. I think DC voltage probably the easiest one to figure out. Red to positive, black to negative. You can see 1.6 volts. What happens if we do it backwards? Well, we'll get a negative sign on the meter on that left-hand side. See that right under the DC? Not a big deal, just something to be cognizant of. So let's try the relative button. So we can do, okay. Then we can hit relative. It's gonna zero that out, it gives us a delta symbol. Now we see our measurement is at negative 1.6 volts. So the voltage of this is now the baseline and any measurement that we take relative to this one, it's gonna show us the difference. So this one is 23 millivolts less voltage than that one. So it's for relative measurements between like power sources. So if you had like a bunch of things lined up, let's say you had a bunch of batteries lined up 
and you're wanting to see, okay, this is my baseline battery. I want to see how does all these other batteries compare to that one. You could use your relative setting. And then lastly, we have Hertz and duty cycle. It defaults to Hertz. Let's bring back our AC voltage source. Check the frequency. We can see we're at 60 Hertz. That's great. Go ahead and turn that off. And then let's do duty cycle. It's gonna be expressed as a percentage. If you're not familiar, duty cycle basically is just like this little meter outputs a square wave, right? And it's saying 50. So the square wave being output by this is a pulsing DC square waveform. And our duty cycle is how long that waveform is on versus off. And so we're getting a 50, so that means it's 50% on and 50% off. And there you go. I don't know why they wouldn't have the mode button be able to select between the Hertz and duty cycle for this uh, selection of the wheel. Let's just try something. Let's just, let's go to here. Oh, it's so that you can go to Hertz and Duty Cycle from other settings. Not that setting, but you can do it from this setting. And then it has a dedicated slot. Kind of an interesting design choice. I don't know who needs to check Hertz and Duty Cycle that urgently, that it needs its own dedicated button that overrides everything in the meter. It's kind of funny, but that's the way they designed it. Anyways, folks, if you're new to electrical testing, if you're not new to electrical testing, whatever the case may be, if you're learning electronics, I've got a ton of videos, shorts and long form, uh, going over all kinds of concepts and going really in depth. Please go feel free, check it out. If you got any questions, comments, or concerns, let me know down below and I'll check you on the next one.